Live from Spectrum Field in Clearwater, Florida, Nesson presents Great Fruit League Baseball. This afternoon, the Red Sox travel north to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Hello and welcome everyone, Tom Karen, along with Steve Lyons as the Red Sox get ready to begin a two-day road trip, staying overnight as they will uh, play in Dunedin against Toronto tomorrow. But today it's against the Philadelphia Phillies and we're talking about Pablo Sandoval because coming into camp, a lot of people were talking about Pablo Sandoval. What would the lost weight mean and what it has meant certainly defensively is he looks much more athletic. You know, Pablo gets to hit the reset button, the do-over thing, you know, so he, this is a, a big year for him to come in and show what he can do both defensively defensively and offensively and the loss of weight has been tremendous for him we've seen added range we see a lot more flexibility down there we see him bend over and pick up a ground ball this guy was one of the best defensive third baseman in the national league before he came over here so defensively he's back to being who he is at the plate switch hitting again having a nice spring hitting 333 couple of doubles five rbi do you like his approach at the place i do and when you're a switch hitter man you got to stick with that he had one bad year hitting right-handed and kind of thought about going away from him but man you put so much work into that over the course of your lifetime just go back and work and let's think about that you know he had that shoulder injury so it wasn't like he had the entire year off just so he could work on his right-handed swing no he's had to put a lot of extra work from both sides of the plate in order to come back he's had some big hits some big rbis so far this spring you hope that continues during the year a couple of familiar faces here in philadelphia daniel nava starting in left field for the phillies today and clay buckles not pitching today but catching up with his former teammates before the game we're ready to play ball red sox and Phillies coming up next on Nesson. Chevy is the you buy ace ticket it's more than a ticket visit ace ticket or call 1-800 buy seats and by jordan's furniture the furniture store of the boston red sox are ready to go at it. Spring training version of interleague play, great for league play. As it were today, the Red Sox trying to get to 500 on the season. Seven wins, eight losses, and a tie. The Phillies right at 500. Seven up, seven down, and two ties in spring training play. Take a look 
At the Red Sox lineup today, in center field, it's Steve Selsky, Josh Rutledge, the shortstop, Pablo Sandoval at third, Alan Craig, the designated hitter, Blake Swihart catching, Matt Dominguez at first, Carlos Quentin in left field, Junior Lake in right, and Mike Miller is your second baseman, Blake Swihart having himself a hot spring. Gonna be going up against Aaron Nola, the 23-year-old is really considered to be the future ace a first round pick seventh overall back in 2014 last year six and nine with a four seven eight before an elbow injury this is his third spring training start and the most important stat of all is that he has been pain free after each of his two starts so far red sox taking on the phillies let's check out the phillies defense steve yes sir check them out there they are right there Franco, Galvis, Hernandez, and Joseph are your infield. Daniel Nava, we know Daniel Nava. Used to be a Red Sox player. He's in left field. Quinn's in center. He can fly. Saunders, we know him from these days with the Toronto Blue Jays. He's in right field. Nola's your pitcher. And guess what? Brian Holiday behind the plate. Former Red Sox as well. And the umpires for this one. Eric Cooper is home plate umpire. Vic Carapaza, Ronnie Teague, and Junior Valentine are on the bases we are underway the Sox after a split squad game yesterday kind of a two-day road trip here today they take on the Blue Jays in Dunedin tomorrow it's kind of the busiest stretch of uh, this middle March portion of the Grapefruit League calendar for the Red Sox nobody wants me to talk about humidity but I'll tell you like it is it is a humid day here in Clearwater temperatures uh, in the 80s, a chance of rain, they said, but I think we're going to be okay. A lot of traffic in the area today. The St. Pete Grand Prix going on just on the other side of the bridge. So our entire crew spending a lot of pregame time figuring out how to get home. Did you drive your open wheel vehicle down here? Uh, I did not. Uh, I've been disqualified from any Grand Prix competition because of previous driving violations. And we're underway here at Spectrum Field. A lot of red on hand as the red-clad Philadelphia Phillies take on the red-clad Boston Red Sox. Steve Selsky leading off. Selsky's had himself a nice camp so far. Team very impressed with what he's done so far here in camp. Former Cincinnati Red. Got off to a really hot start. Hit a skid here recently over the last week or so, but he's still making solid contact. Drives the ball corner outfielder by Trey, but they've had him playing center field quite a bit. Swing and a miss there, and very quickly Nola racks up his first strike out of the game. <laughs> Nola's got a three-quarter arm delivery, fastball, change up, but a curve ball that two years ago at the age of 22 got everybody's attention. Some have called it the signature pitch of the Phillies organization. I didn't know an organization could have a signature pitch. I thought a signature pitch went right along with one guy, maybe the guy who throws it. Well, Nola throws it well when he's on his game and he faces Josh Rutledge here. And he's thrown nothing but strikes so far. He had a nine stretch, nine start stretch last year from late April into June where he went five and two with a 1.68 earned run average. 23 straight scoreless innings in that stretch. And then they said that signature curveball kind of flattened out on him. And after that, late August, went on the DL. They decided that they didn't need to have any kind of a surgery, so he rehabbed, but he never did come back. Slated to be their number five starter this season. And Rutledge drives one to left field. First hit of the game with one down here in the first for the Red Sox. That'll bring up Pablo Sandoval, who we talked about in the open, Sandoval himself a nice spring as Josh Rutledge gets base hit. <laughs> Set him out with a couple of nice defensive plays yesterday. Hitting 333, a couple of doubles, five RBI here in spring training, switch hitting, so Against the righty, he swings at the first pitch, long drive, center field, up, out, and gone. A two-run home run for Pablo Sandoval, and the Red Sox take a 2-0 lead here in the first.
lot of Red Sox fans in the house here at Clearwater, and they're loving what they're seeing out of Pablo Sandoval. We talked about in the open. He has got such quick hands, big hand strength, and he's a wrist swinger. You see him kind of get the, the bat head into the hitting zone and then wrist that ball out of there, and you can see how strong his hands are. That ball's absolutely walloped out of here. Drove that one a long way. And the Red Sox, who won at home yesterday with Chris Hale on the mound, two to one, beating across town. The game Henry Owens started. Today have jumped out to a two nothing lead. A two run home run by Pablo Sandoval here in the first. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why Pablo is such a streaky hitter is because his natural swing is to kind of collapse his top half. He leans way out over the plate, sometimes gets on his front foot. But when those wrists catch up, man, you can see what he can do. Well, certainly trying to uh, hit that reset button that you talked about uh, in the open today, Sandoval. Getting a lot of attention with his play here at spring training. A lot of attention on that swing. The two-run home run giving the Red Sox the lead here in the early going. Sandoval, if you remember last season, only played six games before he had to shut it down. That shoulder injury, getting surgery ultimately, missing the rest of the year. A lot was made about his off-season work, and it appears to have paid off as Alan Craig now. Two and two, the count against Nola. Another guy looking to hit that reset button. Obviously, Alan Craig, one of the more productive players in the National League when the Red Sox got him. There was a foot injury that he was dealing with, and I don't think he said much about it, and I think it was really bothering him. Was hurt again last season in AAA. It was not the same player. Strike three call. Second strike out of the inning for Nola and two down here in the first. You know, when hitters know that you've got an excellent breaking ball in the back of their mind, they start thinking they may see it with two strikes and then Nola just freezes you there with a fastball in the outer half. That'll bring up the number five hitter Blake Swihart. See his numbers here in spring Swihart. Another player coming back from a season ending injury last year an injury he suffered playing left field. Now back catching once again and having himself a good spring. Now get used to it again, everybody. The shift is on. Fouls that one off. Phillies manager Pete Mac uh, McCannon, longtime uh, bench coach and uh, member of the coaching staff of the Tampa Bay Rays, learned at the hand of Joe Madden, who was one of the original overshifters, if you will, as a manager. Guy who loved to have a different defense for every batter. And it certainly worked out for the Rays. Uh, you know, when I look at it, I, I certainly see opportunities to do it. Obviously, the best way to beat the shift is hit the ball the other way. And if you can prove you can do that. But they shift on guys that you can't even imagine. I mean, Swihart will pull the ball, but he hits the ball the other way very nicely. Doesn't seem like a guy that you'd put an all-on shift out. They do the same thing with Brock Holt. Brock Holt's one of the best opposite field hitters the Red Sox have. And yet they shift on him. Two and two the count here to Swihart. Drives this one to right center field. That That'll one. find the gap. Over the shift, through the shift, and all the way to the wall. Swihart thinking three. He rounds second. Here comes the throw, and he's in there. A triple with two outs for Blake Swihart here in the first. Really good read by Blake Swihart right there coming around the bases. He made that decision to go to third long before he ever hit second base, and you can do that because this play is in front of you. He hits it in that right center field gap. He's running right towards the baseball. He can see what's happening. He doesn't need any help from his third base coach. He's gonna make every one of those decisions on his own. And he decided about halfway to second, he was going to third. So two down and a man on third here for Matt Dominguez, first baseman today, Dominguez. Playing in his 11th game already of spring training. Hitting 316. With the 702 OPS. Dominguez, one of those players getting a good long look here at spring training. They like what they've seen so far from Dominguez. 
First round draft pick of the Florida Marlins back in 2007. 362 major league games over the course of his career. Won a gold glove in the minor leagues. A terrific defensive player. High pop up here. Joseph, the first baseman running in, calls for it, and he makes the catch for the third out of the inning. But the Red Sox take a 2-0 lead as the Panda, Pablo Sandoval, goes deep for the home run, a two-run shot. Sox with that 2-0 lead after half an inning. What is going on? Today we're going to run a... Two nothing lead on Pablo Sandoval's first home run of spring training. So Eduardo Rodriguez takes the mound with the lead, and this is the lineup he'll be facing for the Phillies. Cesar Hernandez is the second baseman. Howie Kendrick, the designated hitter. Michael Franco, Michael Saunders, Tommy Joseph, Daniel Nava in left field. Freddie Galvis, Brian Holiday, and Roman Quinn. The lineup going up against Eduardo Rodriguez, who's making his. Third start of spring training. He gave up two earned runs on three innings of work against the Nationals on Tuesday. Puerto Rodriguez now trying to start the season in the Major League rotation. 13 wins over two seasons. Rodriguez still just 22 years old. Won't turn till 23 until April. The young man who's already impressed a lot of people with his stuff and his mental toughness. We've talked about tipping pitches and some of the mechanical adjustments he has had to make already at the age of 23. The Red Sox couldn't be happier with the way he has handled all of that. Facing Hernandez, who fouls it off to the right field side here into the crowd. Good crowd on hand here at Clearwater, as you said, a lot of Red Sox fans. Can't tell who they are, because everybody's wearing red. Gotta look at the front of the shirt. Because you play for the front of the shirt, not the name on the back. That's right. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Ooh. Ramirha just misses outside. Uh, he wanted that one just on the corner there. Just kind of cut it off the outside edge. Didn't get the call. Hot shot into the crowd on the right field side. People scramble as Hernandez stays alive. Hernandez hitting 250. In spring training play, the switch hitter. Phillies look like they're going back to the old Phillies of uh, the early National League days where not, you know, they have a great home run hitting ballpark, but they need some speed as well, and they're, they're adding some speed to that lineup. Hernandez is one of those guys. And he draws a walk. Rodriguez thought he had him earlier in the count, didn't get the call, so the walk to lead off for Hernandez. As we take a look at the Red Sox defense. Well, defense around the in ball field is Pablo Sandoval over there at third base. That's where he's going to be this year. Rutledge at short, Miller at second base, and Dominguez at first. In the outfield, Carlos Quinton making a start in left field. Cieselski in center, and Junior Lake in right field. I'll bring up Howie Kendrick with Hernandez aboard. Nobody down here in the first 
Kendrick acquired right after last season for the Los Angeles Dodgers for Darren Ruff and Darnell Sweeney. Last year, 146 games with the Angels hit 255, but it's three previous seasons, 290 or better every year. This guy has been an excellent run producer his entire career. 501 career RBI and 1,081 games. You know, it's an interesting time for the Phillies. It's kind of year three of a rebuild. Ryan Howard, the last member of that 2008 team to leave as Kendrick with the chopper oh, to short Rutledge tried to turn back to his right and couldn't play it. Everybody aboard. Nobody out here in the first. We talked about this in yesterday's game about how infielders have to decide what hop they're going to get. He wanted to come in and get the big hop, but decided he wasn't going to get there in time. So now he had to back off, which is okay. But when you back off, now you have to hurry. You not only have to hurry to get the out at second because of the speed, you're not going to turn a double play. And when you start to hurry a little bit, you make mistakes. And that's what happened to Rutledge right there. Tried to throw the ball before he got it in his glove. And Swihart already out to the mound for the second time tonight as he tries to get everything settled the man on. They go over the signs. Michael Franco with nobody down and two aboard. An opportunity here after the error for Rutledge. He rode yet to give up a hit. Yet to record an out. Red Sox a little sloppy over the last couple days and aired in yesterday's game one right here. They had been playing the best defense of any American League team in spring training. Third best in the big leagues. Well, he is not getting that outside corner at all. And you know that Erod likes to to stay out there. He'll come inside when he has to, but he'd rather pitch away. Franco fouls it off. Franco certainly a cornerstone of the rebuilding movement. Just 24 years old last year, led the team in RBI and slugging percentage at 25 homers, 49 extra base hits. They don't necessarily want him to be a 25 home run guy though. And he admitted that last year his goal was to get 20 homers. Once he got to that 20th homer, all of a sudden the batting average started coming back up as he started just worrying about hitting the ball and not necessarily hitting it out of the park. Well, we know that hitting in Philadelphia is a great place to hit. Small ballpark, ball jumps out of there. Sox fans will always remember the Manny Ramirez check swing that was a grand slam. <laughs> Caught that short porch in right field. Three-one count here, Zerod. It's the ground ball to third. Sandoval with a snag. Gets it over to second. In time for the double play. More terrific defense from Pablo Sandoval. Hernandez gets to third, but now there are two down for the Sox. That's picking and grinning right there. This is such a tough play. He made the same decision. He knew he couldn't get that big hop, but he had to go get it. He got an in-between hop. That's a, a play right there that can flat out eat you up. It'll make you look really bad if you don't make that play, but it's such a difficult play to make. He made it look easy and turned it over. His confidence has to be through the roof right now. He can move around. Jump around. Jump. We have Michael Saunders. Some people were a little surprised by the moves to get a Howie Kendrick. Yeah. Sign Michael Saunders in January as they're in the middle of the rebuilding. Uh, most people believe that a 500 season for the Phillies would be a terrific step forward after such a bad year last year when they lost 91 games. They were the second youngest team in all of baseball last year. But you, you do have to make moves to move forward and attract people as you move along. You got to start showing other free agents and players out there that you are making an attempt to get better. Saunders is a guy that can fit in here for a while. Kendricks is the guy that you might question a little bit just because of his age. Fouled off by Saunders. I think the belief is for a lot of people, too, that if they're not anywhere near contention, come the All-Star break or beyond, 
maybe you can flip a Saunders, you can flip a Kendrick. If they're doing anything, send them to a contender where they could help. Right. And get more prospects and more guys that can help you in the future here. So Eduardo Rodriguez ahead of the count here, one and two. Man on third with two down after the double play. Missing there. I mean, you just, you kind of you kind of wonder when you think about why Toronto might not want Saunders around anymore. He hit 24 home runs last year for them, and we saw a lot of them as a Red Sox fans. But when you talk to everybody in Toronto, they said he never hit a big home run. Slow chopper to Miller at second base. He'll get it over in time. So after the first two men got on, Eduardo Rodriguez able to bear down, helped by the double play. He gets out of the inning scoreless. This guy not too happy about it. The super fan for the Phillies here in Clearwater. This Red Sox spring training game on Nesson is brought to you in part by Ace Ticket. Ace Ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox, Bruins, and Celtics tickets. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1-800-MY-SEATS to treat someone special to a game now. Welcome you back here to Clearwater where the Red Sox and Phillies going at it. And the Red Sox have a 2-0 lead. What a good escape job by Eduardo Rodriguez. Nice. Got a couple of sweet plays out of his infield and kept his head down, keep working. First and second, nobody out. That can be ugly. And leading off here is Carlos Quentin. Interesting uh, minor league signing for the Red Sox, Carlos Quentin. A blast from the past, huh? Hasn't played Major League Baseball since 2014 uh, when he appeared in 50 games for the San Diego Padres. And he gets hit to lead off the second inning. Nolan hitting Quentin. The first batter of the game is aboard. Quentin played in the Mexican League uh, last year for Puebla. Five homers. What they say? He lost some 30, 35 pounds? 35 pounds. Last season. He looks great. I asked him, I said, I didn't think you had 35 pounds to lose. He said, you know, I just kept lifting heavier and getting bigger. And then, you know, with age, I kept gaining weight, too. At 288 for the White Sox back in 2008. Trying to make a comeback. John Farrell has been so impressed with the attitude. You know, here's a guy playing on the backfields where nobody is paying any attention. A guy who's played in more than 800 major league games. And so today, with the two games on the road after a split squad yesterday, he said it's a great opportunity. John Farrell said, I talked to him the other day. I said, listen, when, when you feel your timing's there and you're ready to make an appearance, he goes, yep, I'm ready now. Yeah. Here he is. He's got more than 150 career homers. It's an interesting sign. Junior Lake now. The man aboard and nobody out. Now, it's funny. I was talking to him before the game, and I said, I, I talked to him about the weight loss, and he, he just said, look, he goes, I really love surfing. I have a passion for surfing now. And I said, I, I, I wanted to lose the weight because I wanted to be able to surf without pain. 
and I got on this program and I lost so much weight and was feeling so good, I figured I, I need to call somebody and get back. The Red Sox answered his call and they said, sure, come on in. Big swing and a miss there for Junior Lake. I'd like to lose some weight and go surfing too. Yeah, you know, without pain. He said he wasn't sure if he still had a career in front of him. Most of it's certainly behind him, but he said he felt so good. He said, I, I want to go through this thing with no regrets, and I still think I have something in the tank. Well, he's got himself on base here after getting hit by the pitch. Junior Lake trying to do something with the opportunity. One and one the count to Lake. Ground ball here, and that'll get up through the middle of base hit for Junior Lake. Quentin advances to second base, two on, nobody out here in the second for the Red Sox. We've seen a lot of Junior Lake in these early spring training games, and that's a ball right there that you're supposed to hit right up the middle, kind of tail him back out over the middle of the plate, down in the zone. It's not a pitch that you can lift very easy. Hit it hard on the ground, see if you can hit it where no one's standing. That'll bring up Mike Miller here. Two on, nobody down in the second inning. Red Sox already lead 2-0 on the two-run home run for Pablo Sandoval. Phillies mildly expecting a bunt. Instead, Miller takes strike one. Miller, 5'9", 170 pounds. Made his Major League debut last year. June 27th, he got in the game against Tampa Bay, replacing Dustin Pedroia. At second base in the bottom of the eighth, he got an at-bat grounded out to shortstop and then went back to Pawtucket the very next day. It was all said and done. He got six games up with a big club, 23 at-bats. Hitting 182 here in spring training play so far. The 1-1. One, one. Nola misses down low. Nola having trouble with his command here in the early going. Yes, he is, and that's that's going to be the difference for him. I mean, high round choice out of LSU. That was the deal. Maybe the best command of any pitcher coming out of college that season. He could dart his fastball, had that big overhand curveball, and a lot of that stuff is leaving him right now after the arm injury. Doesn't throw hard enough to get away with lack of command. 2-1 pitch to Miller, and he gets the corner for the call. Strike two and two the count. That is his equalizer right there. That's the big curveball. The hope that Nola can stay healthy and get through a full season. That Clay Buckles can regain his form here at a new environment we'll talk more about clay buckles in philadelphia in just a bit miller swings and misses strike three first out of the inning for nola that's right there just getting fooled by the arm action there's a good look at clay buckles watch this breaking ball you swing at it right there thinking it's a fastball you think that's middle in i'm gonna hammer it but there's just so much action on it he gives you a good look. He gives you a, a really hard motion like it is a fastball, and then that ball just falls off the table. You've already committed. I would have swung at that pitch, too. <laughs> got to tell you. <laughs> and I'd be sitting over there on the bench right next to Mike Miller. A lot of guys in each dugout who would have swung at oh, that pitch. Oh, man. I think that was a great angle. Selsky fouls it off down the third base line. That was a great replay angle that we showed you there. You know, fans at home, they sit there and they say, how can you swing at a pitch like that? And I thought that was a great angle for us to show you how that pitch looked like a fastball right down the middle when Mike Miller started to swing at it. You're saying Clay Buckholes got to talk to him for a little while before. Yeah. Strange to see him in a uniform, although the red, as he said, makes it a little easier. Wearing number 21 after all those years is number 11 because Jimmy Rollins worked for 15 years in Philadelphia. And even though he's gone, he said, I'm not taking that number. Base hit up the middle for Selsky. They send Quentin. Here is the throw offline. And it's a good thing as Quentin gets in there. Three nothing Red Sox on the RBI single for Selsky. Nice job right there. I was talking to Ruben Amaro before the game today. I said, how you liking coaching third? He says, yeah, I'm loving it. I said, just, just send everybody. And he goes, why not? So today, base it up the middle. This is a tough ball to score on, and a good throw gets you out. 
Quentin, not the fastest base runner, got a good jump right there. But at the same time, this is just a bad throw. When you're that far off line, you can't throw the guy out. Dead if you make a good throw. So 3 nothing with one out here in the second inning. Josh Rutledge up for the second time. Had a base hit in the first inning. Scored on the two-run home run from Pablo Sandoval. Take strike one there. So again, back to the Phillies pitching. You got Buckholes. You've still got Jeremy Hellickson. They're the veterans. You know, they think if they could cobble together 50 wins from the starting rotation and some help from the bullpen, you know, that's 10 wins on average per guy that they could be in that 500 category, which, again, is a big improvement over a 71-91 season. Those are big Fs. You're looking for 10 wins out of every one of your starters? Well, they think a healthy NOLA could get them you know, 13, 14 wins. And John Farrell is pretty interesting about Buckholes, and, and you will hear from him. Garen Austin spoke with him. Next inning, you'll hear from Clay Buckholes. John Farrell said he really thinks the combination of a change of scenery and pitching to National League lineups where you can pitch around the pitcher, number eight hitter, could really improve uh, Buckholes' chances of having a good season. Wow. Strike three called. He got that outside corner, and Rod yep. Rodriguez hasn't found it yet, but uh, Rutledge looks at a called third strike. Rutledge is going to go back to Erod and say, hey, keep trying that, because I just got rung up on it. It's kind of a double-edged sword, I think, for Buck Holtz. I think pitching in the National League will help him. Won't have to go after the heart of the order, as you can get to the back half and throw to the pitcher. But at the same time, he does have to pitch in Philadelphia. It's just a great hitter's park. And he's been known to let balls get up in the air. That'll bring up Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval with a two-run home run back in the first inning. With Rutledge aboard, his first of the spring. It's our keep it moving moment brought to you by Old Dominion as Sandoval didn't wait around first pitch swing ah, Look field. at those strong hands that he has as I told you before he lunges a little bit He's a front foot hitter. He doesn't always look like he has a pit per picture perfect swing Swinging a bat and playing some D Old Dominion helping the world keep its promises and Sandoval this time going opposite field Nava is under it and he'll make the catch to end the inning. But the Red Sox add a run on an RBI single from Selsky. It's 3-0 as Eduardo Rodriguez comes back out for the bottom of the second. That's the sports today. Get your brackets ready with us. We'll break down selection Sunday and we'll look at the Bruins' upcoming four game Canadian road trip. That's the sports today is presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do. Let's see what Eduardo Rodriguez can do here in the second inning against the Phillies. Hernandez and Kendrick both reached a walk and an error. Then Frank, Franco, the 5 4 3 double play. Saunders grounded out. Erod got out of it unscathed. 
facing Tommy Joseph to lead off the second inning here. 25 year old who was acquired in the Hunter Pence deal from the San Francisco Giants. Big pickup for them too. The way he's filled in over there at first base and pretty much made it his own. Howard gone and Howard missed a lot of the season last year. Joseph stepped in there, hit 21 home runs and drove in 47. Fouled off to the right side. You know, the rebuilding's already been going on, obviously, but but Ryan Howard leaves. Uh, they traded away Carlos Ruiz last year. That was the end of that sort of golden era, if you want to call it that, the 08 championship. I think the playoffs five straight years. Yeah. It was all said and done. And Probably should have won more than one. Yeah, Joseph drives this to center field. Uh, Selsky got a late start on it, but he gets in there for the first out of the inning. But now you're you're in it all the way as uh, a Charlie Manuel. Looks like him. As uh, you know, he had, uh, you think about the pitching staffs he had and the guys, uh, the you know, the, the veterans he had. We talked about Ryan Howard, go all yeah. the way back to Shane Victorino. Jimmy Rollins and those Jimmy guys. Jimmy Rollins, I mean. Chase Utley, uh, they're all gone. And now you've got a new crop of young players and a couple of veterans in there like Daniel Nava. First pitch swinging like he did on that grand slam in his major league debut. This one goes all the way back to center field and it's off the wall. Rolls back from the wall and Nava trying to get to third hustling all the way through and he slides in with a triple. Daniel Nava with a triple against his former team with one out here in the second. We all remember his first at bat, one of the most famous swings in recent Red Sox history. Joe Castiglione, the radio play by play guy, said swing of that first pitch might be a fastball, might be the only one you see. And he hit a grand slam. It's the second time in Major League history that somebody hit a grand slam on the first pitch he ever saw in the majors. And it was against the Philadelphia Phillies. There you go. A little payback right there with the triple off the center field wall. It seems to me like the outfielders might be having just a tad bit of trouble picking up the ball right now. I think Selsky knew that was hit over his head, but I don't think he thought it was hit that well. Talked to Daniel Nava for a while before the game. Uh, he and his wife just welcomed in uh, their second child. He said, uh, the plan is that is all. We will stick to man-to-man -man defense. We're not going to try to go zone. Can't get outnumbered. It was great to see him and... Uh, Wanted to make sure we sent out uh, great wishes to all Red Sox fans and, and just how much Boston meant to him and his family and the opportunity he got as a member of a championship team in 2013. Uh, he's just always been a classy guy and you know, he ran with the opportunity that he had and still trying to keep his career going. Bounced around a little bit lately. That last year, the Angels and then the Royals, Tampa Bay prior to that. So this is his fourth team since leaving the Red Sox in 2015 after he was claimed off waivers by the Rays from the Sox. He's at third, Eduardo Rodriguez now, facing Freddie Galvis with one out. Galvis lines that one in a nice play from Miller. It's that glove down to make the catch in the air for the second out of the inning. A couple Adam balls have been helping Erod a little bit in his quest to keep runs off the board with this Phillies ball club. He's been in some trouble. First and second, nobody out. Guy on third base with one out. And now he's got a chance to get out of this inning. And that'll bring up the catcher, Brian Holiday, the guy who spent time in Boston. A well traveled 2016 season for Holiday who started the year with Detroit in spring training, was traded to Texas in March, and then claimed off waivers by Boston in August. Played 14 games for Boston. As a player, you never quite understand why you end up going and playing for certain teams when you play for them, but Obviously, the connection with Holiday and Dave Dombrowski from Detroit was a good reason why he ended up playing for the Red Sox. Holiday working a 3-0 and count here with two down and a man on third. 
Rodriguez gets the called strike. Holiday signed a minor league free agent contract with the Phillies. Fly ball here to center field. Selsky drifting back. He'll get under it and he'll make the catch. So a triple from Daniel Nava is for naught. And Eduardo Rodriguez gets through another scoreless inning. Three nothing Red Sox after two. Behind the closed doors, behind the scenes, behind the bench, get an all-access look at the Bruins only on Behind the B. Catch an all-new episode before the Bruins game tomorrow night at 8.30 on Nessie. Three nothing Red Sox leading as they come to bat here in the third inning. Craig Swihart and Dominguez do up. Alan Craig came into the game hitting 300. He struck out. A called third strike back in the first inning. Nola drops that curveball in there for a strike. Thanks for joining us. I know it is cold. I know you are bracing for a nor'easter up in New England. Hopefully a little baseball, maybe a shot or two of the palm trees warm you up as you get ready to deal with blizzard warnings. What have you been hearing as it's getting closer to the time we're hearing Tuesday? Is it? getting more severe or backing off a little bit oh i think it's a direct hit the only question <laughs> now is is will there be rain on the coast you know how i get caught up in yeah. this weather stuff nor'easter ends up being a circulating band of moisture back in off the ocean you know steve yes i do drawing do. energy and moisture out of the atlantic and bringing it back in do you have any uh, do you have a doppler do you have a doppler 7000 it's all in your upstairs bedroom? it's like you with the stats it's all you know it's i got it all in my head right there Jet stream bringing it up as the storm forms in the mid-Atlantic and comes up the uh, seaboard. It's why Maine, growing up in Maine, you get nailed by the by the nor'easters because you know Maine kind of sticks out and the nor'east actually brings it out of the Gulf of Maine. Yeah, and that that's that circular that's motion that you got the circular band of moisture. Band of moisture if exactly. this was a green screen, I could bring the map up. You probably and show could. Just throw something right up there on it, <laughs> see if it sticks. Coming in off the Nesson coast there, <laughs> heading back towards the Red Sox logo. And hanging out with you is like going to a college class. <laughs> That's why I never call you after the game's yeah, over. Yeah. Craig uh, swings it off there. You had no problem with the uh, setting of the clock last night? Not at all. Yeah. Unlike me. Well, you had a little trouble. <laughs> well, I, I didn't understand why it happened. You... I, I was victim of it. Yeah. Apparently, My... the clocks in our hotel set themselves an hour ahead automatically. How do they know? I don't know, but I preemptively set it an hour ahead before going to bed. Therefore... When I left the house at the apartment at 4 this morning, it was actually 5.30, which in reality was 4.30. Craig, shortstop Galvis is there, and he gets it across in time for the first out of the inning. Uh, I set no my traffic watch at all by me. None.
None for me either, and I came an hour later. I said my, my phone, but it was in the other room, and I just jumped right in the shower and got dressed and got packed up and got ready to go. Yeah, thanks. Now they show me the clock. Yeah. You know what I found out? I was putting my watch on right as I left the door, and I'm like, wait what? a minute. It says it's 5 of 5, not 5 of 6. So it was an early day here at the ballpark. Well, I reset my watch before I went to bed, so I wouldn't even think about that. I figured my phone would adjust automatically, so I set the alarm on the phone. And then there's a watch right there. Who has one of those? For you millennials, that's yeah. a watch <laughs> with dials. It's kind of like a sundial, only it's portable. Yeah, you actually have to know how to tell time, though. You know, none of that digital stuff. One down for Blake Swihart. Looking upside down, is that... Yeah, that's that. He moved his clock ahead. So even with uh, short and sleep, we thank you all for joining us today. Well, you know what I did also that I haven't done? I can't even remember the last time I did this. I called the front desk and asked for a wake-up call. Do they still do that? They do that. No extra charge? No. I was going to call the front desk and have them call you to make sure you got up. I don't know why you're so worried about me. I'm always on time. You are, but I was just worried about the hour. <laughs> I know you need your beauty sleep. <laughs> Didn't get it either. It's a 3-1 pitch to Blake Swihart. Fouls it off, so the full count now. Swihart had the triple with two outs back in the first inning. One of three hits in that first inning for the Red Sox. Two more hits in that second inning. One down here in the third off Nola. Three two pitch swing and a miss. He got him. So Nola records the strikeout. It is his fifth of the game and two down here in the third. Uh, that's a pitch you're really mad at, at yourself for not hitting. This is just a fastball. Good place to hit. That's why it just swings right through it. Again, we talked about Nola with that breaking ball. It is in the back of your mind a little bit. But man, you can't you can't get beat with a good fastball to hit because you're worried about not hitting a breaking ball. There's Dominguez first pitch swinging, but he fouls it on the third base line. A little trouble with the ball out there. Well, stays in the game. She's ready to go. It's the hot corner extended. It is. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if you I always do. But I believe the I believe the the restaurant chain Hooters actually started right in this area, Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater area. Is that correct? I believe that is true. And down the lines, it looks like um, some of the girls from Hooters are the ball people, the ball girls down the down the line. Yes. I didn't I didn't know that that was one of the things you had to be able to do. I mean, almost every team has ball attendants down the line that they hire for the games and. Yes. I'm guessing there's a sponsorship involved. Well, geez, I hope. I mean, now if you want to go get a job at Hooters, do they ask you, can you catch a ground ball too? Yeah. Are you are you bartender, your waitress, infield, outfield, you know? They have terrific chicken wings, by the way. Ground ball to shortstop. And a 1-2-3 inning for Nola, who settles down. When we come back, we'll hear from Clay Buckholz, the former Red Sox pitcher, now in a new home in Philadelphia. Garen Austin caught up with him. You'll hear that next. This is Pollock.
Paul Coles, uh, after 10 years in the Red Sox uh, uniform, now a member of the Philadelphia Phillies. Garen Austin caught up with him. She joins us with more. Well, TC, it was a very familiar face in the Red Sox dugout earlier today. Clay Buckles caught up with his former teammates and John Farrell. He reflected on his time spent in Boston and his thoughts on the trade that ended his 12-year career with the Sox organization. Uh, you know, uh, at, at first it was a little different, just being not being in the same clubhouse as I, as I grew up in. But, uh, you know, it's, it, was a, it, was, it was time for change, and that's, you know, that, that gave me a... a a, a, like a fresh breath, I got to take a deep breath and, and realize that, you know, that not not so many people get to get to be a part of the same club their whole career. You know, I think probably the last one left Pee Wee. So, uh, with that being said, you know, it's we got a good young group here, and I'm looking forward to, to helping this team do some special things this year. Um, what was your reaction when you found out you've been traded? Uh, I think my I think my wife and the kids took a little bit harder than I did. They, you know, that's where both my daughters were, were born in Boston, and and. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't such a shock to me. I f felt like this was coming for a couple years now and uh, you know, th this place it's a they're thinking they're more in a rebuilding phase, but you know, we got a, like I said we got a, a good young crew of kids and and uh, there's a there's a lot of special special talent on the on this team. So, uh, we're looking forward to having having a good year and it's uh like I said it was just a, a I got to take a deep breath and take it all in. A lot of years in Boston. How do you reflect in your time with the Red Sox? You know, it's uh, the team, the organization that gave me gave me a shot to to be a part of, of a couple of special teams. Uh, obviously, the the guys that that are still there. That's everybody thought of each other as family, and uh, I think that's what makes good teams even better. Is is whenever each each person has has the other guy's back, and they know what you have to do to to win, and that's uh Obviously, Boston, you're expected to win every every year that, that you go out on the field, and it's sometimes it's harder than others. But uh, was fortunate enough to be be a part of a couple of good good teams and got a couple rings. I'll always have those. So it's a new chapter, and I'm looking looking forward to this year. Buckles is 16th all time in game started for the Red Sox with 188. And guys, great to see him. Great to catch up with him and wish him all the best. Uh, no question about that, Garen. Thank you. As the entire team caught up with him uh, in the dugout, it was quite a scene. He's been a long time talking to Blake Swihart, who obviously had caught him uh, at times uh, over the last couple of years in the season and in camp. And by the way, as you were watching that conversation, Roman Quinn hit a home run of Eduardo Rodriguez, his first of the spring, and now it is a 3-1 game. A uh, line drive shot in the left center field that jumped right out of here. Hitting home runs is not Quinn's strong point. Speed is what he's known for. Didn't have a home run last year in the big leagues. Rodriguez responds by striking out Hernandez. Yeah, Quinn didn't know it was gone until he was like five steps beyond second base. He was well, still in full sprint. I know, and he got to second base so quickly, that's why. <laughs> he had this kick of turned fly, the Quinn. corner of second before the ball cleared the wall, so he didn't know what was going on. Great conversation with Clay Buckholz, and listen, I know Buckholz uh, became, uh, you know, in the target of a lot of... Uh, Criticism from fans and media in Boston, but when he was a young pitcher, the no-hitter, uh, the 13-win the, the half season before the injuries, as uh, Hernandez with one out, now Kendrick, the ground ball to short, and Rutledge will play it. And, and John Farrell, I think, was, was dead on before the game when we were talking to him, and he said the biggest problem with Buckles was that he was a victim of his early success. Sure. It was a glimpse of what could be, and then the injuries and... Uh, eventually over time just not able to become that guy again and fans expected him to be that guy as they had a right to expect because of what they had seen yeah fan expectations can be a, a really rough thing on you when they think that you're going to be a great player and they and you show those flashes of greatness but aren't able to do it on a consistent basis isn't and, and as time went on you know he wasn't as durable and not as effective and so it was it, you know the lightning rod he became it Anything that was wrong with the Red Sox, people started to look towards Clay about it, and it wasn't fair. And Michael Franco, and hey, you said it before the game, the reset button. You used the expression for Pablo Sandoval. I think that's what this is for Clay Buckles. Uh, it's a complete reset going to a new organization where you're one of the veteran guys on a young staff. Yeah, he has a chance, uh, obviously, to, to be a little bit more of a team leader here, pass down the knowledge that he's gotten over his career, and go out there and pitch as well as he can at the same time. And he's right, you know, I, 
I'm sure it was, it was a big shock to his family. Obviously, Lindsey Buckholz and the two two girls. I mean, they were entrenched in the city of Boston and the community. Yeah, she did a great job with the Clay Buckholz Foundation. By the way, they're expecting their third child uh, in just a couple of weeks. He'll be going back to Texas for that. So congratulations to Clay and Lindsey. We'll take a break here. A run for the Phillies. Quinn with his first homer of the spring. It's a 3-1 Red Sox lead after three. This Red Sox spring training game on Nesson is brought to you in part by Ace Ticket. Ace Ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox, Bruins, and Celtics tickets. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1-800-MY-SEATS to treat someone special to a game now. It's Carlos Quentin, who was hit by a pitch in his first at-bat with the Red Sox this spring. Up from the minor league complex because of the need for bodies here with these two games on the road today in Clearwater, tomorrow at Dunedin. 154 career home runs for Quentin. A career 252 uh, batting average, but some seasons in Chicago, a 288 season in 2008. That 275 for San Diego in 2013. That 08 season was big. You know, he's hit by a, a pitch earlier in 2011. He tied Minnie Minoso's club record by being hit 23 times that season. Well, he's always been known as a guy who will stand right on top of the plate and lean out over a little. So we're going to miss their strikeout. So no less settling down. He was part of the Craig Kimbrell trade in 2015. San Diego. And now the conversation out on the mound as Nola will have a visit from the pitching coach, Bob McClure, and it looks like that will be the day, judging from the high fives going on. And Nola will come out after going three and a third innings and giving up the three runs. You, the get, high you, get, high, you get high fives. You get high fives for giving up three runs. A little fist bump, I yeah, saw there. A bunch of them. Yeah. I think that's the see the elbow. A little more range of motion on the yeah. fist bump. Yeah, maybe that curveball is a little extension. 3-1 Red Sox leading in the fourth. Welcome to our One for Everyone sales event.
Lively. 25-year-old was a fourth-round pick back in 2013. Started 19 games for Lehigh Valley in AAA last year. Second straight year, his whip was under one. 0 0.93 walks and hits per innings pitched. Good year, won 18 games between the two stops. Yeah, 11 in AAA, right? Yeah, he led the league there with 11 wins. Was in Reading before that, 7 and 0. They got him out of there. See, so he's got a lively fastball. That was way too easy, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. And that's fouled off by Junior Lake. When I talked to people, they said he's got a lot of good hop on his fastball. Not that lively. Just a good hop. Just good hop. Late life. Here's the pitch. Oh, Brushes him back to to the count. Lively led all minor league pitchers uh, with the 18 wins last year that you mentioned. Talked a lot about how this. Here to Junior Lake. Yeah, you talked a lot about how this team has been dismantled in order to start over, and Lively was involved in the. In the Marlon Bird deal, traded Bird away, got lively. Lake fouls that off. Uh, Junior Lake was a highly touted prospect coming up with the Chicago Cubs. Last season wound up playing 22 games with Toronto. Signed a minor league free agent contract with the Red Sox and chops this one to third. Franco comes in on the hop, throw, pulls it, Joseph off the bag, but he got it in time for the second out of the inning. Jason Groom should know the name by now. Uh, one of the most uh, highly touted prospects as far as pitches go in baseball right now. Jason Groom, the 18-year-old, was a first pick of the Red Sox last year, their first round pick, and he threw two shut out innings today in an intra squad game against red sox minor leaguers he struck out four got some serious velo and that's what they're excited about they think this guy could be a star a lot of people were surprised that he fell uh to where he did in the draft but a lot of people didn't think he'd be able to sign him and the red sox ultimately did get it done he grew up a big red sox fan and they were able to sort of use that to their advantage you could hear the pop of the glove in that video we saw Miller lines it to right field. It goes all the way to the wall. Getting back there is Saunders. Miller will pull up with a two-out double here in the fourth inning. What would you say about that? Good piece of hitting? Take that ball away from good you. Piece of hitting, although if you hit it to opposite field with enough power, they don't usually say good piece of hitting. Yeah. That's just that's a that's a legit double down the right field line. Linea. Right down the line, let that ball get deep into the zone before he hacked it out of there. Finishing up on Groom, the 12th pick overall. And uh, a lot of people, again, expected him to go earlier, but some teams didn't think they could sign him. Red Sox did. They took the chance. They signed him, and you just saw him today. And we want to thank photographer extraordinaire Alex Spear of the Boston Globe, who shot that video. On his cell phone? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Basically, everybody walks around with an entire production department in their pocket. So, shoot videos, edit. Ground ball. Hernandez was well placed. Gets it across. So, Lively comes in, works around a double to Miller, and ends the inning. Red Sox with a 3 1 lead here in the fourth inning. Dolphins play in Miami. Phillies play here in Clearwater.
spring training baseball are in the air, and before you know it, the sounds of the Plain Ridge Park Casino Fenway Concert Series will be in the air at Fenway Park. Limited tickets remain for James Taylor with Bonnie Raid on August 11th. Get your tickets at RedSox.com slash James Taylor. Fourth inning here at Spectrum Field in Clearwater, Florida, the spring training home of the Philadelphia Phillies. Eduardo Rodriguez back out for a fourth inning. Giving up just the one run, the home run to Quinn, one of two hits against Erod on the day. Michael Saunders leading off here in the fourth. Chases after that one. Erod starting to stretch it out now, getting into later innings of work. No more of those two inning outings, three inning outings. Get into that fourth. Gets ahead of Saunders, one and two the count. Was, well, the knee was the concern, right? Tweaked it again, pitching in a winter ball, tweaked it last season, obviously, at the beginning of the year. It was a problem for the better part of the first half of the year, but he certainly looks healthy today, and it looks like he has no restrictions. Let's see that slider down and away. Oh, he's going to go up in. and in first. Saunders dives out of the way of that one. Well, what does that usually set up? By you changing the eye level, as we like to say, <laughs> especially as you're picking yourself up out of the dirt. That's right. Now, everyone in the house knows that a lot of pitchers will go down and away now with a slider. But the reason why you can still get hitters out is because you have to worry that he might come up and in again. So you can't reach out over it. But I'd say a slider down and away right here would be a great pitch. Here's the 2 2. Let's go down and away, but he misses, so a full count. Yep. In that case right there on the 2 2, you got to get a little bit more of the strike zone. You have to throw that pitch enticing enough for him to swing at. Can't just bounce it as if it was a one-two count. Strike three, got him there. 53 pitches so far for Eduardo Rodriguez, and he gets Saunders on the call, third strike. Saunders was looking for something else. He got the good old fastball right down the middle, didn't pull the trigger. That's where he's just mad as a hitter because you, know, you saw that chin music, he ended up on your rear end. You, you didn't swing at the slider, that was tough. You already fouled off a couple pitches, and then he throws you a 3-2 pitch. You gotta be thinking, all right, I'm back in this count. Throws you a 3-2 pitch right down the middle, and you don't pull the trigger. Let's take a look at the uh, pitchers scheduled to pitch today. We got Craig Kimbrell coming in, Robbie Ross Jr., Heath Hembry, Kyle Martin, and Luis Isla. Who Johnny. we seem to say in every TV game. They save Isla for the TV games, I think. Yeah. Johnny Holstaff after Erod. That'll be good to see Kimball going. We saw him on uh, Thursday. Was it Thursday or Friday? Friday, the game we did, right? Hi, Bob Fly to Junior Lake. Comes in, gets under it, and makes the catch. Two down here in the fourth. Daniel Nava. And that'll bring up Daniel Nava again, his second at bat of the game. A triple in the second inning, but he was stranded there at third. Daniel Nava has battled injuries over the last couple of years, uh, knee injuries in particular, committing him to just 48 Major League games last season. Said he spent a lot of the offseason. Working on cardio and losing weight. Figures he's about 15 pounds lighter this year. And it's not that he felt he was heavy. He just felt a little lighter would help the knees. A little less pounding on the knees. Try to get him to a position to be able to make it through the season. I want to talk to him about his game plan. I'd like to feel 15 pounds lighter. Can you feel 15 pounds lighter yeah. without actually losing the 15 pounds? Because that'd be great. No, you know. I would just like to feel 15 pounds lighter without putting in any of the work. My knees let me know that the 15 is still there. I posted a picture of uh, Nava on Twitter earlier today, and it is amazing the reaction from Red Sox fans. He's just one of those guys uh, that, that Red Sox fans really felt an attachment with, a guy who worked his way out of independent league ball. We all know the story by now. Uh, originally cut from his college team, wound up being the equipment manager of the college team, ultimately getting a scholarship and leading his conference in hitting. 
didn't uh, get drafted, so playing independent league ball and a little adult softball in the evenings. And the Red Sox purchased his contract for a dollar. <laughs> Jared Porter, who's now part of the Arizona Diamondbacks organization, thought they had something, and sure enough, they did. He worked his way. And there works a base hit uh, up the middle. His second hit of the day, Daniel Nava, two for two against his former team. Uh, Firad didn't have to really throw to Nava all day long. He'd be having a really good day. Let's see. You know, look at location, and he just didn't quite get that pitch in as far as he wanted to. Yeah, just three hits allowed by Eduardo Rodriguez today. Two of them from Daniel Nava. 2013. He had the fifth best on base percentage in the American League and the eighth best batting average. Top 10 hitter. And again, really, uh, you know, he played 2007. So he set an independent ball, signed by the Red Sox. 2008 in Lancaster, single A, led the league hitting 341. Like, he jumped right into the pro game and, and showed he was an accomplished hitter. Yeah, you know, I think things went a little south for him in Boston. There was, his swing got just a little bit long on him and. Well, and you can speak to it, and I was talking to Daniel Nav about this earlier today, how tough it can be as a role player. You know, you're not playing every day. Your mechanics can fall out of whack pretty quickly, and you don't get the opportunities to, to, to fine-tune them in game play. You can take batting practice till you're blue in the face, but uh, unless you get game reps. You know, every player will tell you, whether a pitcher or an everyday player, I'm going to be a better player the more I play. I sit on the bench. You know, I can be a viable bench player. I can go out and do my job, but offensively, I'm t I'll just be better. I'll make better contact. I'll get more hits if you run me out there a little more often. Nava on first. Freddie Galvis at the plate. 0-2 the count. Last year, Galvis played 158 games. 27-year-old expected to be everyday player here. Gets a piece of that one and just... Defensive swing to stay alive How about the numbers he threw up last year, too I'm surprised that you still see him towards the back half of this batting order 20 homers for Galvis last year almost 70 RBIs Oh and to the count again Two full seasons with the Phillies now since being called up in 2014 Battling to stay alive here. Galvis had the best fielding percentage of any shortstop in the National League last year. I know that is no longer the gold standard in how you evaluate defense, but it says something. Catching the ball. Good. Plus, he added the 20 homers. Sixty seven pitches for Eduardo Rodriguez, and this is third start of the spring. Swing and a miss. He got him. Third strikeout of the game for Erod, and he gives up the one hit to Daniel Nava, but he works around it. Red Sox have a 3 1 lead after four as Rodriguez has looked good today.
Welcome back to Clearwater. Top of the fifth, three to one. Red Sox leading the Phillies. Tom Karen, Steve Lyons, Garen Austin with you. Glad you could join us with some great fruit league play. Hope you've been able to gas up the snowblower and get the shovels. Oh, no, get the shovels back down from the attic after that's you put just them mean. away. You put them away when it was 70 degrees in uh, February. Ground ball here. Galvis after quickly good throw across in time to beat Rutledge. That's just mean. One as pitch, we're one sitting out. here in shorts and doing the game, and you talking like that. You deserve all the Twitter backlash and, and Instagram backlash listen, listen, you get. I grew from up, all those Boston fans that are shivering. In Maine, okay. It's just that no. doesn't that doesn't cut you any slack it's when you're sitting down here bad mouth in the weather in Boston knowing that you don't have to deal with it. But it's the price you pay for living in the greatest region of the world. New wow. England. I, I can feel you backtracking. Right. Well, no, I'm, there's no question that I'm flaunting the fact that it's 80 degrees and just a little too humid here today. <laughs> Oh, you'll really be upset if there's a little flash rain rainstorm. Oh, no, how could you go there? You're gonna be so mad. Pablo Sandoval up for the third time today. Hit a two-run home run in the first inning. His first of the spring. Sandoval hitting 333 here in spring training. He's had himself a nice run to begin the year. It's one thing to, to to be in the better shape and to show you can move around, but he's turning some great defensive plays and hitting well. Lively out there, and second hit of the game for Pablo Sandoval, a base hit back up the middle. Other good thing about Sandoval, too, and this is, he just coming into his wheelhouse right there. Anything anywhere near the plate, he'd love to hack at it. If it's a good pitch to hit, he's going to make solid contact. That pitch pretty much did nothing right out over the middle. But, you know, the, the thing about Sandoval, too, is it looks like his shoulder is healthy, and we alluded to that a little bit in the open. It wasn't like he just got to hang around and work on his game. He had to rehab an injury, shoulder surgery. So it wasn't like he could go full bore, taking 100 million cack uh, swings and from both sides of the plate. So that shoulder's healthy and he's swinging the bat well. Everything's coming together for him right now. Alan Craig will step in and take a call first strike to start the at bat. Craig up for the third time. He's over two with a strikeout. Ground out to short. Fifth inning here in Clearwater. Red Sox with a three to one lead, looking to add to it. Off Ben Lively, the second pitcher of the day for the Phillies. He was acquired from Cincinnati for Marlon Bird in cash considerations back in 2014. Has not yet made his major league debut. Lively misses. It's a 2-1 count. Last year was awarded uh, the Paul Owens Award in the system as the best pitcher in the minor league system for the Phillies. Led all minor league pitchers with those 18 wins we talked about before. 28 starts, durable, 170 innings of work, which you love to see him building up the length. You don't have to worry about that if he makes the big club. And he's going to get a shot at it, I think. I mean, you talk about an organization that, re that is rebuilding. You mentioned before that they're hoping to get 10 wins out of their five starters. That's it's not a good feeling to be if you're the GM of this ball club, hoping to get 10 wins out of each of your guys. You better have a guy like this waiting in the wings that might be able to pick up the pieces if you need them. Well, you've got Hellickson and Buckles in their 30s. Jared Eikhoff slated as the number two starters, 26 years old. As Craig grounds this one, the chopper. Franco has one play with Sandoval off on the pitch. Second out of the inning. Sandoval able to advance to second. Little hit and run action there, maybe. Got to bring up Blake Swihart. Vince Velazquez is 24 years old, and he's the guy talking to Clay Buckholes and some of the Phillies this morning since I got here an hour early. Had plenty of time to talk to everybody in the ballpark. Vendors. Uh, but he uh, he was quick to say Velasquez has electric stuff, and they think the 24-year-old is ready to help. And then Nola, who started today, is still only 23. So we've got a young rotation coming together, but young pitchers will have their ups and downs usually. And as you said, someone like Lively may get the opportunity if he pitches well. I got here pretty early today. Couldn't find a door to get into the dang stadium. 
everywhere I went, they said, no, no, you got to go around. You did that too? You got to go around. I did like a maze. I, I went I went around all the way fence. around the entire system. I went system. back out to the street. Yeah. I came back in one parking lot. He said, Sandoval gets back. He said, you see that path over there? Yeah. yeah. Well, walk down that. <laughs> really? A path? Yeah, I had to walk down the path, <laughs> and the gate, the guy uh, who mans the first gate had gone to the bathroom. <laughs> so I just walked by that gate, and then I got yelled at for not going through that gate. Bad system. They got here eventually. Swihart sends that one high up into the seats. When two count stays alive. It's one of the older spring training facilities. They've renovated it over time, but for all the new ballparks, you still get a little bit of that old feel. You said you played here? Played here against Pete Rose. How about that? Yeah. That was a big thrill at the time. Did he come in spikes high in a spring training game? He was getting older. Swihart fouls that one off. You saw that sort of uh, restaurant area over there in left field. Beyond that is where their Cloverleaf, the complex of, of ballparks and diamonds is. I saw all that too, because I was walking around out yeah, there. Yeah, I was back there for a while this morning trying to find my way into the stadium. Wow, you don't really have a lot of seats here for I, fans. I think, How do you play like, games? I think they want to give you a nice tour. This one fouled back. Just over the fence and out of play. Had a good chance to talk to Matt Stairs, the new hitting coach of the Philadelphia Phillies. Philadelphia legend hit that uh, pinch hit home run off Jonathan Broxton. Eliminate the Dodgers. Indeed. I was there at the time. I'm sure you were. I'm sure you saw it from a different perspective. That ball is still going. Nobody hit Jonathan Broxton there except the Phillies. And that guy, I played with Matt Stairs. Who didn't play with Matt Stairs? Well, he played for 13 different teams. Blake Swihart lines this one and it drops in the center field. So a two out, two strike RBI single for Swihart, who's two for three on the afternoon. Nice, good adjustment by Swihart in this at bat from his previous one. We talked about how before it looked like he threw, he swung right through a very hittable fastball. They tried to do it to him again. And he says, I don't think so this time. A very hittable fastball again, out over the plate. And he spanks it up the middle. That'll bring up Matt Dominguez. Two down and a man on. You know why I love Matt Stairs? During the winter while he was a player, still a Major League Baseball player, in the winter he lived in Bangor, Maine, and was the head coach of a high school hockey team. <laughs> I think he liked hockey more than baseball. Uh, he's Canadian. Now he lives back in Fredericton in the offseason, still coaching a high school team. Said they had a good year. This one fouled up high to the right side. Getting over there is Joseph, and he'll make the catch to end the inning for the Red Sox. Get a run on the RBI single from Blake Swihart. And they lead it four to one. Sandoval with a couple of hits. Swihart with two. Sox have a three-run lead.
Jenny, Tuesday night at 5. Find out the best places to eat and drink before, during, and after the game throughout New England. That's Tuesday night at 5. Dining Playbook is driven by your New England Chevy dealers. Red Sox with a 4-1 lead. Eduardo Rodriguez done for the day after four strong innings. Gave up just the one home run to the number nine hitter, Quinn. And now Craig Kimbrell will take the mound as Kimbrell is the second pitcher of the day for the Red Sox. Fan two in a scoreless third inning game against Team USA on Thursday. Prior to that, retired the, retired the side in order in his first spring training outing against Tampa Bay. So this will be his third go round. It's kind of incredible because for everything that happens down here at spring training and how the pitchers are trying to work themselves into shape, it's the closers get, that get the fewest opportunities in order to do that in game situations that they will face during the regular season. Here you see Kimbrell in a game in the fifth inning. We've seen him struggle, not over his career, but last year we did see him struggle in non-save situations. This certainly is not a safe situation so he doesn't get that adrenaline rush all spring long and that's always the challenge for a team right you're trying to find that middle ground for a closer you want him to face major league hitters but if you wait till the ninth inning you're gonna get the four number 74s that Tampa Bay brings to town or whatever it is so here you bring him in when you still get to face Holiday Quinn and Hernandez here in the fifth inning Kimbrell's career ERA as a relief pitcher, 1.86. It is the lowest in Major League history right now. And quickly gets ahead of Holiday, 0 and 2. I don't know if you know this, but when the, the National League ballparks here, and when when do the National League pitchers start hitting? Uh, you know, it's a great question. I was asking uh, Clay Buckles about that today because he doesn't know. He's never done this as a National Leaguer. I mean, Matt Stairs was talking. I'm gonna make a hitter. I'm gonna make a hit home run. So I'm your guy. And I asked Matt Stairs after, he said, yeah, they, they tell us just nothing yet. We don't want anybody pulling a rib cage muscle. We don't want anybody doing an oblique. I figure last 10 days, maybe they do. And and in what case, if the situation was like it is today, if an American League team comes to play in a National League park, do you then have your American League pitcher hit as well? Play buckles two for 13 lifetime, by the way. But he's hitting it. He's going to hit it at Citizens Park a lot. That's a good hitter's park. Two for 13 isn't bad for pitcher. What is that, like 170? That's pretty good. <laughs> 154, I'm told. See? That's still still go with that's pretty good? Well, two, hey, how many pitchers have we seen that just can't even put their bat on the ball? He's got two hits. Hey, Bartolo Colon hit a home run. I think bottom line is if you're a pitcher in the National Leagues, you better know how to bunt and know how to put the ball in play, you know, in other situations where you can't bunt. More often than not, know how to leave the bat on your shoulder. Well, yeah, because it's ugly. 3-2 pitch from Kimbrell fouled off. Holiday stays alive. There's, there's too many situations that come up as a pitcher in the National League where you can help yourself as a pitcher and you see an anemic effort. It's not like Bumgarner running up there. He's got 14 homers. And Madison Bumgarner probably the Exception to the rule there, right? And Holiday draws a walk. Get up that for Holiday. Lead off hitter on against Kimball. 14 career homers, 49 career hits for Bumgarner. Sneaking up on how many home runs I have. <laughs> not good. And there's a couple guys out there in the West Coast that could hit. Uh, Kershaw could swing the back. Greinke. Who was the pitcher in Arizona? He was a really uh, good hitter for a while. Married Jenny Finch, didn't he? Yeah, what was, uh, what's his name? Can't think I of can it. Picture him. I can't think of his name. Uh, it's because he was a better hitter than a pitcher. Yeah. Owings? Micah Owings? Micah Owings. Micah Owings. That's who it was. Josh Beckett hit a home run in Philadelphia, I remember. Yeah, there you go. In the ballpark. Helps. All right, here Craig Kimbrell. This was the problem last year, right? The non-save situations, and it was usually a walk to the first or second batter that would really exacerbate the bad inning. Facing Quinn here, who hit the home run in the third inning to lead off the only run of the game so far for the Phillies. Shows a bunt, pulls it back, 1-1 the count. And because Kimbrell loves to throw out of the windup, isn't in that stretch all that often.
256 saves and 281 career save opportunities. This one is a base hit to center field. Holiday will go around. And now nobody out and men on the corners for Craig Kimball. I meant to say about his delivery is when there's a guy on first base, it is a different delivery going into the stretch worrying about guys on first base. He always has the same delivery. Now he has to worry about all the speed in this lineup that we were worried about coming up to face him. So men in the corners, nobody out. Top of the order coming up here. Four to one, Red Sox lead in the fifth inning. Runner goes from first. Here's the throw from Swihart, not in time. That guy can absolutely fly. Steals 30 bases every season. Problem is he's always been banged up a little bit. They want to absolutely turn him loose at the major league level, but you saw that especially against a guy like Kimbrell is not fast to the plate. You almost stick this one in your back pocket. Look at the speed out of Quinn. It's already there. Terrific jump. Pretty good throw from Swihart. Made it close. Hernandez is over one with a walk. He walked to lead off the game for the Phillies. We've got two men on with nobody out after an error to Josh Rutledge, but Eduardo Rodriguez got Franco into the double play and then Saunders to ground out. To get out of the threat is a ground ball to Miller at second. He'll have to go to first run will score. And the RBI ground out for Hernandez makes it a 4-2 game. First out of the inning for Kimbrell. That's Howie Kendrick will step up to the plate for the third time. Reached via that error in the first and grounded out in the third. Swing and a miss from Kemper. Good block there by Swihart. You just kind of see the comfort level change for Kembrell when he goes into his stretch and delivery when there's guys on pace versus when there aren't guys on base. Last season, his first year with the Red Sox, 57 opportunities, 31 saves. That was the lowest save total he's had in a full major league season. Falling behind here, two and one. 30 walks, most he'd given up in a season since 2011. Catches the outside corner, two and two the count now to Kendra. Wow. Fouled off by Kendrick. You know, I think everybody would agree that last year was a down year for Kimbrell. Certainly uh, the kind of season a lot of clothes would be very happy with. Made the all-star team. The knee injury, and they had said three to six weeks before he came back. Came back three weeks to the day. Seemed to factor in. Play at home with the throw off the line. Kendrick will reach safely on the fielder's choice. Dominguez coming off the bag that way. Felt his only play was to come home. Couldn't get it there in time to beat the Speedy Quinn, and it's now a one-run game. Yeah, that's that's just a little bit more being aware of who's playing. And in the spring training game, you wouldn't necessarily think Dominguez would know a whole lot about Quinn at third, but you're not getting this guy. He's way too fast. We already showed you how quickly he got from first to second on the stolen base. He's the fastest guy in the organization by far, and you just have no chance on a play like that. So still one out, two runs in. Oh, 
Franco takes ball one. Last year, Kimbrell had a 2.41 ERA in save situations, a 5.12 in non-save situations. It was ridiculously a different situation if it wasn't a save situation. You would think just law of averages would catch up with you and be okay every once in a while, but boy, he just had the, his roughest outings without question if he had to go in there and mop up. And again, the walk seemed to be the issue as the runner goes. The throw from Swihart, not in time. Second stolen base of the inning for the Phillies. I don't think Swihart was going to be able to get him anyway, but I don't think he had a great handle on the ball right before he threw that. I think he had to readjust before he let it go. Talked about a lot of these stolen bases, and you look at Blake Swihart behind the plate. Can't really blame him. He, Kimberl is not a guy who's quick to the plate. Fly ball here to left center field to the track. Running, making the catch there at center is Selsky and hustling back is Kendrick. So a long fly ball. Selsky got there and there are two down in the fifth. Nice play by the sometime center fielder Selsky out there covering some ground to make that play. Two down now, Saunders coming up for the third time, 0 for 2. Grounded out in the first, struck out in the fourth. Red Sox holding on to a 4 3 lead. Base hit to right field. Kendrick being sent to round. It's a tie ball game. A three-run inning for the Phillies off Craig Kimbrell here in the fifth. Well, check out location. It's just right down the middle. The velocity's there. Right around 96 on that pitch, but big league hitters will hit it if it's right down the middle. Yeah, a little foreshadowing up here, huh? Talking about the big trouble he has had without a, a safe situation. And it's just a shame that you're, you don't have many games down here that will give you that adrenaline rush to be a closer before the season starts. So a 4-4 game now in the fifth. Seventh batter of the inning. It's a fly ball to center field. Selsky back there. He'll make the catch to end the inning. But the Phillies score three off Kimbrell. We're all tied up after five here in Clearwater. <laughs>
think history being made today here at Clearwater, Steve. I believe this is the first time a major league ball game is being played where two former Nesson analysts are on coaching staff supposing one another. <laughs> Gary D. Sarcina was with us in 05 and 06. He was replaced after that by Matt Stairs, now the hitting coach of the Phillies. Garrett Austin spoke with Matt Stairs. Garrett. TC, I talked to Matt Stairs and he said he absolutely loves his new job. He's really enjoying it. But when I asked about his time at Nesson, I said, what's it like to work with TC? He looked at me and said, TC worked with me. But he said you guys had so much fun talking about hockey. He said that's all you guys talked about in between breaks. But he said it got kind of nasty because he's a really big Montreal Canadiens fan. And he also told me that when he was working with Jim Rice, they would forget to put their earpieces in because they were having so much fun and didn't even know that they were live on air. Everything you just said is absolutely true. Some of the most FCC curdling moments came as we came back from breaks and I had to scream at Rice and Stairs to put their uh, earpieces back in. Well, what the, the biggest takeaway I have on that. And a base hit here to start the inning as Quentin is one for two now, second time on base. As the fact that you got them both, you know, off air somehow. Once they work with you, they're gone. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Ken Maka went on to manage. Gary D. Sarcina, fast track on the managing front. Matt Stairs, they're raving about him. I'll make something out of you yet. Hang around, Steve. I hope. Still have time. Someday you'll call the world. Uh, you've done that. <laughs> Someday you'll be in movies. Uh, you've done that. <laughs> you might be stuck with me. You might be the one. That'll be okay. Yeah, we'll be all right. So happy for Matt Stairs, a good man. And uh, again, you know, you talk about a guy who made the most out of his abilities. He spent a long time, one of, one of the best pinch hitters in the history of Major League Baseball. Yep. And, and nobody wants to be a pinch hitter, but there is value in being that guy who can come in late in the game and deliver a big hit. Bonus points for you if you remember where we played together. Uh, pitch inside. Expos? Yeah. There you go. He, he, it, the, the record books say he played for 12 different organizations. He gets upset by that because he played for both the Expos and the Nationals and feels that should be 13. <laughs> yeah. they're the same they only list that as one team? Yeah. Junior Lake up for the third time. He's got a hit. One for two in the afternoon. Tie game here in the sixth. Quentin diving back as Lively checks him. Stair said he's having a great time with this team because it's such a young group of hitters. You know, to be in an organization where they're okay with the rebuilding process they're in right now, you really get to be a coach and work with some of these young guys. Yeah, obviously at the major league level, you do want results, but you know you're not going to be ultimately competitive against a lot of the teams you play against. So you are developing more in an organization like this right now than you normally would. See the numbers on Junior Lake. The Red Sox organization, you better develop in the minor leagues. In Boston, you got to win. You know, it's interesting Red Sox fans don't think of the last few years necessarily as rebuilding, but as you look back on a four-year stretch, they won a World Series, but they were in last place the other three years. If you didn't win that World Series in 2013, there's no question you'd be looking at that four-year run as the rebuilding process of the team, which is now expected to contend for a division and a pennant and a World Series championship, but sure. they caught lightning in the bottle there in 2013 in the middle of it all and put together an unforgettable run. Lake, ground ball to Franco, over to second. Uh -oh. Trouble on the transfer, they call him out. They say that Hernandez had the ball and lost the handle trying to Make the transfer over to first base. So one down on the 5 4 put out here in the sixth. No replay, and obviously he caught that ball and was reaching in to grab it and throw it. Couldn't come up with the handle. Should have been a double play ball, maybe, but didn't turn it. Mike Miller up, number nine, hitter one for two on the afternoon. Had a double in the fourth inning with two outs. Stranded there, struck out 
in the second inning against Aaron Nola, who went three and a third today. Pitch count got up there in the first couple of innings, so didn't go as uh, deep into the game as they had hoped. Sox taking on the Toronto Blue Jays tomorrow in Dunedin. Stephen Wright will be making his first start of spring training. Drew Pomeranz makes his first on Tuesday. Talking to Stephen Wright this week, I said, you know, you're an all-star. How do you end up going on the road to Dunedin? He said, yeah, being an all-star in this clubhouse doesn't really carry a lot of weight. <laughs> you're up against Cy Youngs and Guys who uh, are multiple all-stars. Miller swings and misses. Runner goes, and he's in there safely. Little trouble with the handle by Holiday. Take a look at the upcoming spring training schedule as the Sox will be taking on Pittsburgh. This is the Nesson schedule. We're back at it on Thursday after a couple of days off. Then Minnesota, home and away. The Yankees next Tuesday up in Tampa, a week from Tuesday. But the Phillies again. Wrapping it all up with Washington in Washington. It should be a lot of fun as we go to Nationals Park for an exhibition game. That's fouled off to the right side. Logan Moore now catching, beg your pardon, no longer Holiday. That was Moore had a little trouble with the ball. Red Sox playing 36 spring training games when it's all said and done. That's inside. The lone day off on the schedule is the 22nd. That's a week from two Wednesday. A week from Wednesday, they have a day off. That'll be a day off for you and I as well. Day off for everybody. from Lively. Miller out ahead of it, but he fouls it off to stay alive. Most guys, it's funny, most guys down in spring training, they don't know what to do with themselves if they have a day off, so there's a, a good percentage of guys will show up. Yeah. Take batting practice, do some stings in the morning, get some work in, and go home, maybe catch a late golf round, but... What are you gonna do, sit around your hotel room? Swing and a miss there, Miller chases in the second out of the inning. Second strikeout for Miller today. He struck out uh, against Aaron Nola in the second, now against Lively, who gets his second out of the inning. Yeah, Sox will finish the season, or the preseason, if you will, spring training and a couple of exhibition games, getting to know the Washington Nationals pretty well. They finish against the Nationals in Fort Myers on Thursday, March 30th. They play him in Washington on Friday the 31st, and they play him in Annapolis at the U.S. Naval Academy on April 1st. Three, three game games, series. three different ballparks against the same team. Two states. Is it a best of three series? Three states technically, right? D.C., or two states and a district. And a district, yeah. That's going to be uh, an amazing event. We're starting to get some details about that game in Annapolis. I think uh, fewer than 1,000 people on hand to see the game, midshipmen. 800. Selsky up for the fourth time today, one for three. Red Sox about to hit the Phillies nine to five here, but it's all tied up at four. Well, that series against the Nats there, when you talk about finishing in Florida and then playing the two games up in Washington, that'll give the Red Sox a quick taste of the weather up in Boston right before they open up at home on April 3rd. It's a good chance it could be pretty chilly up there.
Line drive here, tailing away to right field. It's a base hit for Selsky as late comes around the Red Sox. We take the lead, 5-4 here in the sixth. Selsky with a, another two-hit day. He'll get a rest, almost like a veteran. He gets to go sit down. Someone else will caddy for him. Two for four afternoon. A couple of RBI for Selsky. Had himself a nice day. They like what Selsky has done here at spring training. I think you'd have to call that a good piece of hitting. That was a good piece of hitting, no question about that. Water, 375. It's like Rusne Castillo in the run, isn't it? I believe it is. Uh oh. Line drive, first base side. Lopez, his first at bat of the day. Nice diving stab there by Joseph to end the inning. But the Red Sox get one back. On the RBI single from Steve Selsky, they take a 5 4 lead, heading to the bottom of the sixth. Foxwoods Resort Casino this Friday and Saturday. It is the comedy stylings of Carrot Top. April 11th through the 15th, Cirque Eloise, Circopolis. And May 5th, now we're in Steve's wheelhouse, Foreigner. <laughs> yeah. They're as cold as ice. Can't wait. Luis Isla on the mound of the Red Sox with some changes behind him. Uh, Bogusevic. Moves into left field. We've got Ruzne Casillo, who you just saw as a pinch runner in center. Lopez, who just batted, lined out to end the inning as your new shortstop. Devers over at third base. Hiker Manessas is your new second baseman. And Dominguez stays at first. Got all that? Got it. Blake Swihart still behind the plate is Luis Isla. Takes the mound for the Red Sox, the third pitcher of the day. Tough inning for Craig Kimbrell. After four strong innings from Eduardo Rodriguez. One and one the count here. As Daniel Navas, two for two on the day, had a triple in the second inning and a base hit in the fourth. And lines this one to left field. 
Thought about stretching it to second, but cooler heads prevail as the throw comes in from Bogusevic. Three hit afternoon for Daniel Nava. Everybody's saying, why do we get rid of that guy? Well, Pablo Belline, why can't we get guys like that? Exactly. Now, uh, good for Daniel Nava. Three hit afternoon. Days like this will certainly help keep you in the thick of the picture and the top of mind for evaluators. Oh. The Bondier as it's dropped down. Swyard up, it. throwing it. Nice job by Dominguez. Diving to stop it to keep Nava at second base. A good bunt single there for Galvez. Galvez steps up. And now it's two men on. Nobody out of the sixth off Isla. Galvez hit 20 homers last year. Decides to drop this one right out in front of the plate. You're better off just stick in your pocket. He runs too well to throw him out right there. And right away, Isla is in a little bit of trouble. He's like hadn't given up a hit in his last three outings, but he's given up the single to Nava and the bun single to Galvis. And he's in trouble here with nobody out and two on. Technical one run lead in the sixth. Logan Moore at the plate now. Catcher who came in, Brian Holiday. Swihart out to have a word with Isla. He's the last year, 39 relief appearances on AA Portland, second most of anyone on the Sea Dogs staff. Pitched with Margarita of the Venezuelan Winter League, not with a Margarita in hand. He no. actually pitched for Margarita. Maybe after the game, they sponsor you. That'd be all right. 1.93 is ERA in 14 games with Margarita. You have trouble when you're pitching there. They say you're on the rocks. <laughs> and then you get salty. Yeah, he has such a funny delivery, Isla. He's very calm and cool into his stretch. Nice fluidity. And then all of a sudden just really hustles and hurries his way through his final delivery. Kind of like an explosion at the yeah. end of the delivery. He's a max effort guy, but only for the, about the last fourth of his delivery. Falls off the mound. Smooth, then herky jerky. Fouled off here by Moore. So would you average that out then and just call it average? <laughs> you know, not a max effort guy. Two parter. Twenty four years old. I'll say it once again, acquired for Alejandro de Aza. Who? Of the San Francisco Giants. That would be Alejandro de Aza. <laughs> Made his triple A debut against uh, Buffalo in September. Couple of strikeouts, one hit, no runs in an inning of work. Baseball America calls him the 22nd best prospect in the organization as he gets more to swing and miss there, first out of the inning here in the sixth. Here comes Quinn again. It's not going to be as much fun watching him run because there's guys on base in front of him. But man, this guy really showed us something, something with his speed. Two for two on the afternoon, a home run in the third inning, first run of the game for Philadelphia, and then a single, stolen base, scored a run in the fifth. Swihart out to have another conversation with Isla. Talk about Rafael Devers over at third base. You talk about the top prospects. He was ranked 18th in that Baseball America list. So, you know, while Dave Dombrowski certainly traded away a good number of prospects over the last couple of years, they still feel they had the depth of prospect. Maybe they're not a top five organization anymore in prospects. They've traded some of those prospects for Major League talent, as this is a drive to center field. Castillo back after it. He'll make the catch. Runner trying to advance as the throw comes in. 
Second out of the inning as Nava gets to third. Good read by Nava out there. He understands a little bit about who's on this ball club and what they can do. He sees Castillo out there. Figures I got an easy chance of moving up. And that's always a fine line. I think in this day and age with uh, the competitive balance tax teams trying to get reasonably priced talent, and they hold on to their prospects where sometimes those prospects, rather than panning out, become assets you can trade to get a Chris Sale, to get a, an elite bat, an elite arm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm in the camp of, you know, I don't mind going out and signing free agents because you know what you're getting. You know you're getting a proven player at the major league. You might have to overpay to get him, but you know what you got. And then, you know, if you have to trade guys away, that's fine too, only because, as you said, prospects become suspects really quickly. Devers has trouble with that as he came across the diamond and everyone is safe. Nava scores and we're tied once again, 5-5 five, five the score. Devers couldn't find the handle on it and then wasn't sure where to go, first or second. That's going to have to be an error. That's too bad for Isla, too, because after a couple quick base hits, first and second, nobody out. He was on his way to working his way out of the whole thing. Ends up giving up a run right there, not his fault. So still two down. Howie Kendrick up, fourth at bat of the game for Kendrick. He's hitless on the day, but he's reached twice. An error on the shortstop Rutledge bag in the first. And after grounding out in the third, he reached on a fielder's choice and ultimately scored in the fifth inning. That run was the tying run of the game. It was 4-4 at the time. The Red Sox got one bag in the sixth. Now the Phillies have answered back to tie the game at five. Well, back to that conversation. I mean, there are a lot of great prospects that you see in the minor leagues. Hey, this guy's going to be the next thing. Next, Junior Lake, pretty good example. Junior Lake was a hot, hot prospect in the Cubs organization. It's going to be a mainstay in the outfield for years to come. It just always doesn't work out that way. Trouble here with two on and two out. Nisla falls behind. Kendrick 3 0. Runner going to third. Swihart, no throw. Because it was ball four. No point in throwing. Kendrick didn't know how many balls and strikes there were. So now base is loaded here with two outs. And Michael Franco up. 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Grounded into a double play in the first. Grounded to second in the third inning. And then a fly ball to center field in the fifth. But a chance to do something here with the bases loaded. Now Franco with 25 homers last year. He loves to hit left-handed pitching. And he's got an excellent situation right now with the bases drunk. He's listed on five straight balls here. Franco batted 306 with three homers and 16 RBI in the final 26 games of 2016. The 1 0 pitch from Isla. Ground ball to short. Lopez gets it over to second base for the force out to end the inning. So we head to the seventh inning tied 5 5 here in Clearwater.
and one is the count to Rafael Devers. Devers coming in. Pablo Sandoval, good day for Sandoval. Two for three. Two run home run, a single and a run scored. High pop foul. Over there is the shortstop. And one down here in the inning. Hey, want to give a shout out to uh, Ari Schultz. Five years old, watching us in a hospital room today. Uh, I've never met a bigger Red Sox fan over the years. He had a heart transplant March 3rd and just recently woke up. Uh, and and yeah, there was a viral video. He said his heart uh, was, was all about baseball. And baseball had his heart. Uh, and, and he met Raviel Devers, who was just up, and Luis Isla. So many guys who uh, rallied around a great picture I've seen of, of the players with Ari. So I know Ari's watching the game, and Ari, we hope you're doing well. And, and I'm telling you, the Red Sox are going to have a great season, so we're glad you're ready for some Red Sox baseball. And he's going to be ready to watch it. Got a pitching change here, so uh, the Red Sox are going to try to get something going as they get deeper into this Phillies bullpen. All tied up, 5-5 here in the seventh. Welcome to our one for everyone. Highlights on the Red Sox Grapefruit League games as they prepare for the regular season. Red Sox spring trading coverage is presented by Jordan's Furniture, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. New pitcher here for the Philadelphia Phillies in the seventh inning, Michael Marriott coming in. Last year, his first year in the organization after spending a couple of years in the bullpen for the Kansas City Royals, 19 appearances before the Royals waived him and he was claimed by Philadelphia. Facing Bryce Brents here to get things going in the seventh inning with one down. Ground ball here, Franco still in there. Gets the throw across in time. Two down here in the seventh. That'll bring Blake Swihart up. Swihart with a couple of hits on the day. Triple in the first inning, an RBI single in the fifth. Going to hear from Eduardo Rodriguez uh, next half inning. How he felt about today. Pretty good effort. Four innings. Just the one home run. Really nice effort. Daniel Nava was a thorn in his side, but other than that, gave up only three hits, two of them to Nava. The Quinn home run, the only damage. Swihart drives this one to center field. Back there in time to make the catch and end the innings of the Red Sox. Go down in order here in the seventh. 
Martin as the Phillies come to bat. We're all tied up at five. Welcome to. Five five the score here in the seventh inning. Eduardo Rodriguez went four innings, gave up just one run on three hits. Karen Austin has more on his day. All right, a little bit of uh, audio technical difficulties. Karen, have we got you now? Karen, can you hear us now? All right, we're working on that. We'll get that taken care of. And as we do, Robbie Ross Jr. will enter the game here in the seventh inning. Robbie Ross Jr. is the fourth pitcher of the game for the Boston Red Sox. I just told you about Rodriguez's day. Ross coming in after striking out two over a scoreless inning Thursday against Team USA in the exhibition. Outing before that, he gave up one run on two hits against Atlanta. Hadn't given up a hit in three outings prior to that. So already his fifth outing of the season for Ross. As he faces Michael Saunders to begin the seventh inning. Saunders one for three. RBI single in the fifth inning. Part of a three-run inning off Craig Kimbrell. Ross in his two seasons with the Red Sox through the exact number of game appearances, 54 in each season, but last year was a much better year for him. Made himself a very valuable member of that bullpen, being a guy that not only could come in and get a, a lefty out for you, but he didn't do that job very often. He was at least an inning pitched guy. Served a bunch of different roles out of that bullpen. pop-up Devers drifting in onto the grass of the infield and to make the catch for the first out of the inning Ross 27 years old now in his ninth year as a pro's third year with the Red Sox a career best nine strikeouts per nine inning on average that's like a strikeout an inning if you do the math I'd rather not it's easy if it's handed to you Tommy Joseph getting his fourth at bat of the game. He's over three, three fly balls to the outfield. Nothing to show for it. Takes ball one from Ross. Has Ross set the over under for how many home runs he will catch with his hat in the bullpen yet? Well, the number's got to go way up. It was like four last year, right? He it did was that. four and a half. I think they put the half in like Vegas does just to make it tough. You got to cover the half. That well, basically means five. Right. So I think you got to be north of seven this year. He's the best ever. Oops. And he'll hit Joseph here. Joseph doesn't like it, but he'll take the base. That might have hit everybody. Got a piece of Swihart, too. Good. 
Take another look oh. here. It's Swihart on his meat hand, hits Joseph on the thigh, ricochets all the way over. And Daniel Nava gets another opportunity. Three for three on the afternoon, a couple of singles, a triple. It thought about stretching that out to a double last time around, which would have set this up as a potential cycle, but he'll instead settle for the four-hit afternoon. Stay hot, Daniel Nava. Nava not, not wasting any time, just going up there thinking, well, what the heck, why should I hang around here? I'm swinging the bat pretty well. If I like one, I'm going to hit it. Robbie Ross, first pitch fastballing him, and he gets a shot right back up the middle at him. And he'll come out for the pinch hitter and get a nice ovation as Daniel Nava goes four for four on the afternoon against his former team. You know that's got to feel good here in the middle of spring training. Going four for four in a spring training game is kind of hard to do because a lot of times you don't get four at bats. He's replaced by Aaron Altair, the outfield prospect. Last year was dealing with an injury before finally uh, getting the chance to play. So he's in there as the pinch runner. And we've got two on with one out in a tie game here in the seventh. J.P. Crawford getting his first at bat of the game. Came in as a defensive replacement last inning. Crawford, big prospect in this organization, just 22 years old, a first round pick in 2013. Began last season with Reading, the AA Eastern League. Hit 265 there with three homers, and then get called up to AAA, hit 244 with four homers. Skies this one to left field. Bogusevic is there. Two down here in the seventh. Enjoy the Fenway experience with your group in 2017. Red Sox group outings are the perfect way to entertain your clients, boost employee morale, school outings, and team outings while taking in an unforgettable event. Visit redsox.com slash groups for more information. I'm Karen Steve Lyons. Garen Austin with you here in Clearwater. North, just north of St. Pete, right? And kind of west of Tampa? Yeah, the geography of this area escapes me a little bit. It's got, you know, I'm looking at where's the airport? Where's that road race? Where's the baseball game? Uh, and then which airport? Is I this passed Tampa Bay St. Pete Stadium. Airport. A little slow chopper that'll come to second base. Manassas is there, and that'll end the inning. So a hit and a hit batsman, but Robbie Rouse Jr. able to work around it, and we head to the eighth time.
Clearwater. Good day for Eduardo Rodriguez. Four innings, just one run on a home run from Quinn. Garen Austin has more. Hi, DC. We'll try this again. Well, Eduardo Rodriguez just spoke to reporters, and he said he felt really good about today, especially with the secondary pitches. Here's a little bit more. Uh, really good. So today my slider was really good. Both sides of play. Changed the first couple innings was missing on the outside, but um, in the last inning I was available to to put it back on the on the strike zone and get on the swing and a miss on that. Is TC, I'll pass it back up to you guys. All right, thanks very much. As uh, we get going now, Karen doesn't have her sunglasses on. I know. Why not? What happened? Well, Karen, we're, we're very cloud cover. disappointed in the lack of. Uh, UV I, protection. I've got them on now, guys. All right. Well, <laughs> after the next pitch, we have to show this. As uh, I asked you earlier, Garen, if these are the biggest sunglasses in Major oh, League Baseball. No. I have so many pair that are so much bigger than these. So yeah. Those aren't even the biggest in your collection. Oh, no. No. These are, I, I do like these, though. I do like them. Aren't, like the aren't those the kind of sunglasses that you can wear, like, over your regular reading glasses or something and no one will even know? I think no. you can wear them over your Halloween mask in October. <laughs> Cataracts. <They're huge>. Nothing. <laughs> All right. they're, not you, that, they're not that big. But you, they're you wear them well, Garen. Well done. Thank you. Well, thanks, TC, you picked the blue shirts. You know you've been team That's captain right. picking our shirts, so I had to match. I had to match. There you go. That's just from service time. I have the longest service time at Nesson, so I get to pick the color of the shirts. That's a pop-out to short. Good job today, everybody. I like that one, up. yeah. Everybody called, but you. I called for the royal shirt. Yeah, everyone matches but you. Well, I have a different Nesson ticket. Huh? Look at this. This is... This is when you know you've been around for a long time. I actually have the throwback Nesson blue ticket. You have the newfangled Nesson white ticket. I just, you know, reach into the bag and grab the, grab the right shirt. I think you grabbed the wrong one. No, I don't think so. What yep. color is the Nesson ticket? Blue. What color is the Nesson blue. ticket on Garen's shirt? That doesn't matter. You oh, yeah, it does. You guys are both wrong. That ball to center field. Castillo didn't have to move much to make the second out of the inning. So two quick outs there as Bogusevic. Sorry, that's not Castillo. That's a Bogusevic. That's a Bogusevic at the plate. That's Quinn making a catch out in center field. Two quick outs. Junior Lake getting his third at bat. I like when uh, Erod talking about his secondary pitches said, "You know, my changeup was amazing." <laughs> I, I like it when you feel like you're when you're feeling that good about it. Threw a couple of really good sliders, both in and out. My slider was looked good. My changeup was amazing. I saw him right before uh, he came out. I was walking in the tunnel and he stopped me. He said, "Did you see Venezuela win?" He was all oh. excited about the World Baseball Classic. I'll tell you what, and I know you and I have certainly had our criticism about the World Baseball Classic. There have been some thrilling games. The atmosphere in that Dominican Republic against the U.S. game last night uh. is the kind of game that young people are going to gravitate toward. An incredible electricity in the ballpark and the flair of the players. Yeah, the very first year of the WBC, I did those games down in, in Puerto Rico for the second round. And that pool had the Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, and another team, I couldn't remember who the other team was, but you talk about absolute craziness in the stands. It All it is is a big party that shows up around a baseball game. There's bands in the stands, and people are chanting stuff, like, nonstop from the first pitch till the end. They don't, they don't waste their time. A couple of the U.S. pitchers admitted that the noise and the atmosphere affected them. Just crazy. You know, you're in Miami, so very close to where all the action is. Here's Lake with a high fly ball. It'll be taken by the shortstop and in the inning. So we head to the bottom of the eighth, still tied here in Clearwater.
ticket holders experience the best seats, price, and benefits Fenway Park has to offer. For information on becoming a season ticket holder, please visit RedSox.com slash season tickets or call 877-RED-SOX-9 today. Bottom of the eighth here in Clearwater and the Red Sox will bring out their fifth pitcher of the day. It is Heath Hembry making his fourth appearance of the spring to a perfect inning against Team USA on Thursday. Outing before that, he struck out the side against Atlanta. Three Grapefruit League appearances, four appearances, including the exhibition against Team USA, which is not technically a Grapefruit League game. But it's all the same for Henry. Four scoreless innings. He's given up just three hits. He has struck out four. He's having a terrific spring. Yeah, and you know, this is the time for him to really establish himself out of that bullpen as a guy that they can count on consistently. Uh, you know, he shows you flashes of dominance. You know he's got the nasty stuff. Just being able to go out there and get it done on a consistent basis is the next hurdle that he needs to jump over. He'll go up against Roman Quinn to begin the eighth inning. Pete McCannon not afraid to leave his players in there a good long time. Eighth inning, Quinn, who started in center field, still out there. Well, he needs himself a rally. He's got his good speed guy leading off this inning to do it. Last year, Heath Henry made his Red Sox debut in a 19-inning game out at Anaheim. Did you do that game? Yep. Were you in Anaheim? I was. For the 19 inning game on a Saturday night? Quinn skies that one. And it is taken by the shortstop for the first out. Lopez under it. Craig Kimbrell had a tough go. One inning, he gave up three earned runs. But as most veteran pitchers, he said today and every spring training day is all about getting his work in. Nah, just getting reps in. I mean, it wasn't the uh, inning, you, inning you draw up in your head and go out and give up a bunch of hits and walk the leadoff guy. But um, overall, you know, just getting reps in and throwing some pitches. Just, you know, walk is probably more than anything else, right? Yeah, I mean, getting 0 2 and then trying to um, mess around with some pitches and not really put them away, and then all of a sudden, I'm in full count there. And, um, I mean, yeah, you don't, you don't ever want to do that. And, Kind of led to the rest of the inning and threw a lot of pitches. Whether it's the walk or the hits, how close was the location? That was Kimbrell in the clubhouse after his outing as Heath Hembry has one quick out here in the eighth facing Pedro Florimon now. It's not as a free agent in the offseason. I would think that would be a name that you'd love to say a lot. Florimon? Pedro Florimon? The entire name, yes, there indeed. You go. Spent three full seasons with Minnesota. He's been with four different major league teams, debuting with the Orioles back in 2011, from 2012 through the 14 with the Twins. Last two seasons, up and down with the Pittsburgh Pirates. One and two now the count. Flutamon. So not. Uh, to be concerned about the one inning of work for Kimbrell? Well, I guess not. I mean, if he's not concerned, I guess nobody else should be. But I just think it's an odd situation for any closer who really doesn't get the opportunities to, to close games in spring training. And you can't duplicate that adrenaline rush. And we know that Kimbrell needs it. Foreman gets out of the way of that one, a two, two count. Kimbrel last season, the batting average of balls put into play against him in non-save situations was 317. You know I'm a big fan of the BABIP stat, an indication of luck, as uh, Flutemann goes down for a strike out of the inning for Hembry, but that you know, batting average of balls put into play as we take another look at the strikeout is an indication of luck. If it's a higher BABIP, that just means that the balls went into play were hit where they weren't. And if it's exceptionally high, above a 300, that usually means there was some 
bad luck to go a long way. And certainly some of those sa non-save situations that we saw involved a bleeder or two that just sort of found their way through a gap. Sure. There was no discernible difference in the stuff from Kimbrell. He'd still come out there. He still had 96 to 99. But his location, I guess, was the biggest difference. Well, and he was the first to say it throughout last season when he was having a little bit of trouble is uh, the, the, the walks per nine inning were the highest of his career. And, and so if he can lower the walks again, like today, begin with a walk. When he's not walking people, he's pretty effective. One of the best in the game. Two quick outs here for Hembry, who misses there on the 0-2 pitch to Kendrick. See Hembry's numbers in AAA last year. I mean, he didn't spend that much time down there, but he was up and down a couple times with the Red Sox, obviously. But he made a bunch of appearances for the Red Sox. He's in 38 games. But his Pawtucket numbers <laughs> were off the charts, limited size, but he had eight saves down there. He only threw 13 in a third innings. Struck out 22 guys, eight saves. ERA .68, dominated. 12, 12 of the 13 appearances he made for Pawtucket last year were scoreless. He only gave up a run in one game. And he strikes out uh, Kendrick to end the inning here. So a one, two, three inning for Henry, two strikeouts, and we head to the ninth, tied at five. You in part by Ace Ticket. It's more than a ticket. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. By Old Dominion Freight Line, helping the world keep its promises. And by Bob's Discount Furniture. Well, we head to the ninth inning here with a 5 5 game. And another pitcher here, just the fourth pitcher of the game for the Phillies. Edubre Ramos, the 24-year-old righty. He's made four appearances here at spring training, a low ERA of 2.08 last season. Made his major league debut on June 24th at the time of the recall. Led all Phillies minor leaguers in ERA, whip, strikeout to walk ratio. Later picked up his first major league win against the Mets in July. He does understand the importance of throwing strikes. He walked just 11 guys at the major league level last year, and that was in his rookie season coming up where guys get a little bit of, a little bit of scared. They don't want to throw the ball over the plate when they get to the big leagues. They're afraid of it. Somehow it might start getting hit. He didn't care. Struck out 40 guys, walked 11. Hiker Manassas will lead off the ninth as the Red Sox try to make something happen. Now, remember, is this, and, and I don't know the answer for today, a lot of times they're tied after nine, you get a tie. 
Red Sox have a tie. Phillies have two ties so far in spring training. I would say considering that the Red Sox are in kind of a modified two-day trip up here that there's a good chance that they wouldn't extend. Manassas chases that. Throw to first. One away on the strikeout here in the ninth. There's those strikeouts we're talking about. Well, Ramos' uh, last season showed himself as, I'm sorry, uh, we're talking about, uh, yeah, Ramos uh, showed himself last year as a guy who could be a part of the setup. It was a setup guy last year, 42 appearances last year for the Phillies, 40 innings of work. Play not in time there as Castillo reaches. And the Red Sox have the go-ahead runner aboard here in the ninth. Almost a fantastic play down there at third by Franco. Pretty good bare hand effort there. Castillo runs well down the line. Just didn't have enough on it to get him out. And that gives the Red Sox a chance here. Franco Diner play. Lopez at the plate. Franco playing the entire game tonight. They got a few guys playing the whole game. Kind of refreshing. I don't have nearly as many scribbles on my score sheet. guys out. Lopez drops a bump that. down the third baseline, and it just does go foul. Almost a thing of beauty right there. Didn't quite deaden the ball enough. Had a little too much on it down that line, and late in the ball game, that'll skip south on you and end up a foul. If you could just get it deadened a little bit more, put it in the grass, you can walk to first base. Lopez showing some pretty good speed up the line, too. Last year had 15 stolen bases for the Salem Red Sox, a single A. That one gets away. Castillo was already on the way. It was nearly at second base by the time the ball got to the backstop. It was a stolen base. Now the runner in scoring position. Red Sox looking for some ninth inning drama here in Clearwater. Not sure why Moore missed that one there. I don't know if he was getting a little jumpy with Castillo on the run there. It was a high pitch, but it should have gloved that ball. Second ball he's had a little trouble with. We saw him on the steal earlier, mishandle. Swing and a miss there from Lopez. One and two the count. Moore is kind of a throwback to the old big tall catchers. Carlton Fisk, Mark Sullivan, Parrish. Remember Parrish behind the play? Sure. Detroit Tigers, big, big catchers. Now you don't see too many huge catchers. Smaller guys. Swing and a miss from Lopez as he strikes out here. Two strikeouts in the inning for Ramos. Nasty breaking ball. Well, he's showing us a little bit about what his numbers look like. Sometimes you see numbers on guys and you're like, what, this doesn't even look right. This guy shows the ability to strike guys out. Nasty slider right there. Comes right in and strikes two guys out. So that'll leave it to Rafael Devers. Takes ball one. Devers, we told you, ranked as the number 18 prospect in all of baseball, number two in the Red Sox organization behind Andrew Benintendi. Strike call there on Devers. One and one, the count from Ramos. It was a year-end All-Star in 2014 and 2016, a mid-season All-Star in 2015. Fly ball to center field. Under it to make the catch and end the inning, and we head to the bottom of the ninth. All tied up as the Phillies come to bat here in Clearwater.
tied at five as the Phillies trying to walk off with one here in Clearwater. The Sox with a new battery here for the ninth inning. Kyle Martin coming in. Martin making his fifth appearance of uh, Grapefruit League play. Also had an appearance in that uh, exhibition against Team USA. He's given up two earned runs in four innings of Grapefruit League play. An earned run in the sixth against Houston, one on the third against Atlanta. And he'll be facing uh, Michael Franco, who's been in the whole game. In the ninth inning here in Clearwater. Jordan Procession, the new catcher. And first pitch swinging. It's a base hit for Franco. One pitch, one man on for the Phillies. Martin's another guy that you really have to pay attention to. Knocking on the door at the major league level. Had good numbers at AAA Pawtucket last year. It's a strikeout master. Good slider. Big kid. 6'6 to 40. But he's greeted at the first pitch he throws with a sharp liner in the left field. Franco was trying to end the game on one pitch right there. Did you see that hack? He was trying to lift and separate right there and try to send the fans home happy. I was talking to Matt Stairs about it before the game, all the talk now about exit velocity of the bat. He said, you know, you, you want increased exit velocity, swing harder. Yeah. It's kind of a simple <laughs> strategy for that. But. Makes sense to me. I would think, too, that exit velocity has a lot to do with the spin on the ball. I mean, if you backspin a ball, if you square one up and you backspin the ball, the exit velocity is going to, you know, it's very very similar to golf. If you, if you fade the ball, if you slice the ball, it's not going to go as far. It's not going to come off of your club as well. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know, too. Whoa, heads up. Oh, they had him back at first, but the ball gets away. And Franco will head to second base, and he's thinking more, but he pulls up. Looked like they had him. Is it the pinch runner? Who's the pinch runner? Cozens. Dylan Cozens. So Cozens gets to second base. Well, they had him picked too, didn't they? Yeah, I think if you hit the ball and backspin it, travels farther and faster. Oh, and one the count here to Saunders. One for four on the afternoon. Martin deals. Ground ball. Bobble there, and everyone will be safe. Lopez coming across. Couldn't handle it. And now with nobody out, the winning run is 90 feet away. Wow, so much for being the best defensive team in the American League. That's the fourth error of the day for the Red Sox today. That'll hurt you. And a chance for Tommy Joseph to send everybody here in Clearwater happy. Maybe not everybody. A lot of Red Sox fans here. Send everybody home. They yeah, will do that. Nobody out. Men on the corners here. Procession. A couple of words for Kyle Martin. Now the catcher gets back behind the plate as Tommy Joseph, 0 for 3, was hit by a pitch in the seventh inning. Robbie Ross Jr. is on the mound at that point here. It's Kyle Martin. The big righty looks in. Ball one. Infield in, as you'd expect. Nobody out here. They'll still have to come home to try to get the runner. Yeah, you have no choice here. Cut off the run. Ball gets through. Game's over. Fly ball, but foul. Joseph, the 25-year-old first baseman. 
21 homers last season in 107 games as a rookie. John Farrell, not much of a gimmicks guy when he manages, not messing around with bringing in maybe a fifth infielder or anything like that in this situation. Joseph with a fly ball to left field. Bogusevic under it. The runner tags the throw. It's a strong one coming home, but he just beats it. And the Phillies walk off with a win. Terrific throw from Bogusevic. Yeah, gave it your best effort right there. Just barely offline, but that's a long way to go. And in that situation, you're not looking to hit a cutoff, man. You air it out. Try to get it to home plate the best way you can. And that's what he did right there. See if you can check it out again here. He got behind it, got the one good crow hop, and let it rip just on the inside part of the plate. Pretty good play all the way around. Good speed from third base on the way down. Everybody telling him to slide there. The umpire right on top of the play, calling him safe. Red Sox go down in this one. A walk-off win for the Phillies. As the Red Sox are beaten six to five here in Clearwater for Steve Lyons, Garen Austin, our entire Nesson crew here in Florida. I'm Tom Garen. Thanks for watching. Final score for the final time. Philadelphia six, Boston five. Stay tuned right now for an all new edition of Charlie Moore Outdoors.